JT, RJ, what's up, dude? Ryan, Zach, Turtle Maniac, the PB Dad, No Joe, No Job Inc. What's going on, C? J Pops, Glenn, Greg, what's going on, guys? Doug, Top Notch, James, Tony. You guys are going on fast tonight, man. No job. Yeah, I got it now. What's going on, Duke? Jeff, what's going on, brother? What's going on, Matt? You guys got on quick. What's going on, Doug, Sean, Travis? What's going on, dude? Adam, what's up, buddy? Brian, Kevin, Doug, been waiting yet. I tell you what, I, did, I got home from work at 6.30. I showered and I ate, and I made it down here at 7.01, so that's pretty good. What's going on, see? So what is up? Who's fishing? Anybody fishing? What's on the docket tonight? Now nah, we're just chatting, just talking. Ellen Hopper, appreciate the two bucks, brother. You're interested in the giveaway, and I always mention this every time I get the first donation. We always do a little super chat giveaway. Always do a little super chat giveaway during these. So if you guys do donate, I put you guys in a little giveaway. We got um, the line guides, wrap fishing, both sizes. Green pumpkin vile crawl, green pumpkin plasma tail, green pumpkin vile bug, and then we got the uh, pumpkin pearl exo swim. That's what you guys will win. If you do donate, I'll put you in a giveaway. Be sure to um, check back in the comments once the video is done being processed and uploaded, and I'll you'll see who won. Uh, thanks, Greg. Yeah, I used to sell these, and um, I don't sell them anymore. Uh, OT wear is the one that uh, made them for me. And, um, you know, you guys were asking for, for gear and I wanted to come out with a really high quality shirt, but, um, long story short, we just couldn't get the price down to where these really were affordable for you guys. So I just stopped selling them. I mean, there was no profit. There was like five bucks profit on the shirts just because everything was made in America and everything. So it was more expensive. And, uh, like I said, I never even got paid for the shirts that I did sell. Yeah, I'm not even worried about that, but there was zero profit on them. Um, again, that wasn't the deal. They were just that expensive to make here in the U.S., so again, I just stopped selling them. All right, what's up, man? Just ordered some biospawn with your code. Thanks a lot, brother. No problem, dude. Went fishing this morning. How'd you do, Jordan? We are officially thawed, so I'm hoping to get on the water um, this Friday, hopefully. If things go right, hopefully I'm fishing Friday. Wish you were fishing 12-inch of ice. That sucks. Yeah, I seen that uh, Brian Latimer won the uh, FLW. It's pretty cool. I'm fishing very hot in good old Tampa. Dude, I don't want to hear it, RJ. How about, but yeah, that was pretty cool. I didn't get to see it. I was working all day, but it's pretty cool that um, he won. I watched a lot of his videos. Pretty cool dude. Digital scale brand. I use the uh, Connect Scale. And I got a code for them as well. It's in the description of my videos. The PB Dad, appreciate the $1.99, buddy. You're entered in the giveaway. Guggen Bates all the way. That's cool. Who all watched B Lat win the big one? Yeah, I wanted to see it, dude. I was working all day, but what's up? Order from Cal Coast today and use your code. Thanks, man. No problem, Bill. Yeah, for those of you guys watching, the um the Rod Mule is back in stock. Cal Coast Fishing. And they got the newer version out where it'll it'll now accept longer rods. So you guys can use code TJ81 to get uh, 20% off. What's going on, Zach? Appreciate the buck. Go on, Brian. Appreciate the two bucks. Colt Owens, appreciate the buck. Heavy arm, seven, 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 seven. Appreciate the two bucks. You guys are all entered in the giveaway. The Lance win was incredible. Yeah, I've seen a lot of pictures on uh, Instagram. That dude, he looked pumped, man, to win. And uh, pretty cool. Look forward to watching that one. Enrique, appreciate the five bucks, buddy. You're entered in the giveaway. Uh, Candace Bat Pond Jumper. No, I do not compete in any tournaments. Just like, uh, you know, fun stuff with my buddies, which... Usually Mike Watts, that's really not much of a tournament, you know, but yeah, just for fun. Leroy, what's up, dude? 
Cap or Junkie hat? You know, I thought about bringing out hats. That, that is a good question, Doug. I may look into that and uh, see what I can do. I tell you what, I want you guys to put a number one on the screen. If you would like to me to come out with hats or just like a regular old like cotton t-shirt or something like that and maybe a blend type shirt, let me know. If I see a bunch of ones on the screen, maybe I'll do something like that. Hey, Jeff, appreciate the five bucks, brother. Maz, what's up? Still frozen. That sucks. Got skunk today, dude. You got the W. Thanks, JT. B lad just bought one of those phantom hats. Need a tackle junkie hat now. Try to support you guys on the water. Appreciate it, Greg. What percentage of your lures do you think you actually use? Eventually, I use them all. My problem is I bring a lot of different things to try on the boat, you know, while I'm out fishing. But I'm very stubborn, and if I go out one, one day wanting to catch them a certain way, I'll fish that way till I catch them. So a lot of times I'll never end up trying a lot of the stuff that I bring with me. So eventually it'll all get used, but it takes some time. Watching Seminole, Home Lake, that's cool. I found some 14 to 15 pound floor. What would you use those for? Uh, see, I, I tell you what, Mud, I use 15 pound probably 75% of the time. It's great for spinner baits, chatter baits, um, Texas rig, jigs. I mean, there's pretty much, I mean, I'll throw pretty much anything on 15 pound. It all depends on, again, on the weight of the lure. Uh, depending on depth and weight of the lure, sometimes I'll drop down to 12. But I mean, majority of the time, 15 pound is my go-to size. Especially like, it depends on brand, but Seaguar and Vizex has a really small diameter. So you can get away with a little bit bigger line. Jordan, you got skunked, huh, dude? Andy's birthday today. I seen it on Facebook. Phantom Fishing, if you're on here, happy birthday, dude. Can't wait to see TJ's 2019 bass bid right lines or tight lines. Finally got some warm weather in Kentucky. Had some good fishing today. That's cool, Rick. All right, now we're off to the ones here. Adam, appreciate the 279, buddy. You're interested in the giveaway. Uh, we've got a bunch of ones on here. Is it possible to make a chatterbait as good as a jackhammer? You know, it's all in the connection. I mean, the Z-Mans, I believe, they start up the fastest. And I believe it's the, it's the connection there on the head of the blade. But, um, I mean, pound test, trailer, a lot of things come into play as far as how much they're going to vibrate. But, uh, again, I haven't even used the jackhammer. I bought them to try them. And, again, I'm, I'm stuck in my ways. I like what I use. And um, I haven't tried them yet, but I plan to use them. This season, and kind of compare them to the Shockblades. Uh, Bobber Watcher 54 says, great long loss from 25 bucks. Bobber Watcher, is that your name, Mom? Still frozen, Ryan. Appreciate the five bucks, Doug. You're into the giveaway, buddy. What's your favorite rod and real company? I have to go with the Kuma. If you guys are familiar with my channel, I've been uh, using their gear for the last uh, few years. I'm now sponsored by Akuma. And um, it's great gear, but I was using the gear before I was even sponsored by them, so it's good stuff. But I don't only use their stuff. If you guys have been keeping up with the channel, I got a pile of videos behind this, or pile of videos, pile of reels behind this wall here that I'm going to be using and reviewing. Uh, just because I know you guys may not all want to use Akuma reels, so I want to be able to use different things so I can recommend different brands for you guys. See, want to please be sure to make an XXL as usual. Okay, dude. What weight do you recommend for swim bait heads? 3 8 Kai Tech um, weight. I guess it all depends on depth, wind. I mean, a lot of things come into play. Um, 3.8. Probably, I mean, for the depth that I fish and things like that, I probably wouldn't go over a quarter. Normally, a 3 16 quarter. Again, this depends on uh, depth and speed and things like that. What bait will you use for your first cast to start this season? Good question, Duke. Um, for sure, I'll have a spinnerbait, squarebill, chatterbait, lipless, probably a jig, all tied on. That's a toss-up, dude. Um, I'll probably start, see if I can get them on a spinnerbait first, because that's how I like to start out. But I may have to cut back to the chatterbait, maybe drag a jig, something like that. But probably spinnerbait's what I'm going to start out with. Who's your pick for the classic, man? I'd love to see old Van Dam pull one off. Or, you know, be his last one for a while. So I'd really like to see him win another one. 
Midnight here in Ireland, but can't help stay up for these live chats. I appreciate that, dude. Everybody hit that like button. That's right. Listen to James. Hit that like button. We only got we got 108 people on and only 30 thumbs up. We can do much better than that. When you wake up from all day, horrible stuff. Flu. YouTuber on best medicine. Appreciate that, dude. I agree, but it's is that a patent or something? What's your favorite old school crankbait besides a bomber square A? Um, that's a good question. I'd have to, I'd have to give that some thought. Um, old school crankbait. Um, I don't even know. Um, probably. Uh, what are they called? The Rapala. I'm not sure how long those have been out. I think they're called like the um, no, not the Fat Boy. They're they're like a really big weight bait, but they some I think they do go down to either one or three foot. I can't remember the name of them though. It's by Rapala. I'm sure one of you guys know that. Help me out in the comments. Heard the shock waves blow out. Have you experienced that? No, the shock waves, I haven't noticed that at all. For me, they, they're one of the ones that don't rise up that fast at all, to be honest. That's really the thing that turned me on the most about those is they don't blow out. A lot of times, you know, with the chatterbait, you get a lot of rise, and you don't really get that much rise out of the shock waves. Picked up an underspan this week, and the thing won't run straight. Faves the right. What do you think is wrong with it? Um, underspan, I would see if the blade is actually... Uh, attached to the the body, maybe it's bent, you know, the little metal that would come down to hold that blade, or it could be your trailer. You've been liking the constant chatter base? Yeah, it's hard to beat them. Hey, listen to C, man. More likes. Strike King, or Strike Along, got the blessing from Z, man. Bait man says, the new Strike King, Thunder Cricket, is heard to be just as good as the jackhammer. I'll have to check that out, Greg. Uh, yeah, I've used a bunch of dial reels. What's your go-to lure for chocolate milk water? Uh, square bill or uh, big spinner bait? Robert, appreciate the nine ninety nine, buddy. You're entered in the giveaway. Everyone just getting on. We do have four packs of biospawn lures for the super chat giveaway. All green pumpkin, as well as the line guides from Rapid Fishing. Anyone that donates is entered in the giveaway. See, Joshua, have you fished the Lunker Hunt Kraken? Picked one up today. Kraken. Uh, you know, I fish so many things, I have to see it. The name sounds familiar. Kraken. I want to say that I have. I think, actually, we got that in an MTB box. But, again, I fish so many lures, I can't really pinpoint if it was good or not, to be honest, bud. I found Rick Glenn, old school crankbait, still in packaging at yard sale this weekend. Looked like from the early 90s. Yeah, he used to... Of what the RC, uh, it's been a while since those, well, I guess it hasn't been too long since he left Lucky Craft, the RC 1.5s. He's been with what, um, what's that other company he's with now? Not Strike Pro, um, can't think of it now. Six Cents, yeah, I like Sense Lures, Six Cents Lures. Oh, what was that name? Um, not Strike Pro, why would you think Strike Pro? Um, I can't think of it, somebody else let me out in the comments. Best two hundred dollar bait cast combo. Oh, I'm gonna go with um, I'm gonna go with Bass Pro Gear. If you guys were lucky enough to get in on that Bass Pro uh, Classic sale, Pro Qualifier fifty bucks, Killer Reel uh, retail for hundred bucks, and again, uh, Bass Pro rods are great. I mean, um, the Dobbin Sturry is like a hundred bucks. The Akuma rods are hundred bucks. I mean, really for two hundred dollars, you can get a pretty um, decent setup these days. Fat wrap, is that what it's called? That don't sound right. Uh, seemed like it was fat something, though. Is Shimano worth the money? I just ordered my first Shimano reel last night. I got the DC that you guys wanted me to review, so we'll find out. Look, Is that what it's called, fat wrap? I'll have to look that up. What's your opinion is what I meant above about lose reels and rods? I haven't used the rods. Uh, the reels I really like. I've used the Custom and Custom Pro, and I have, I have a handful of other ones I'm going to be using this season as well. And uh, so far, they're pretty solid. I got no complaints. Let me get my first bait cast, or what do you, what do you recommend? Um, hard to beat the Tatula. Tatula CT. 
DT fat, is that what it is? I knew, the, I knew the word fat was in there. How long of a leader line would you put on braid? Uh, me, I don't like to run through my guides. But if you use a small enough knot, you can do that. Probably, I know a lot of guys go usually two rod lengths through. But um, like I said, me, depends what I'm doing. If I'm just dropping down and I feel that I need floor carpet on the, on the braid, which again, I don't do often. I'm not running through my guides. You know, I'll go ahead and put, you know, five, six feet just because I'm not running it through. I'm just dropping it down. But um, again, I really don't like to use leaders at all. You ever consider painting your own crankbait blanks? Jeff, I'd like to do that and make my own plastics and everything, but I really don't have the time for it. But I would like to do that someday. Shimano is a good company, but I prefer either Abu. I hope they decide to another Swedish made reel or Daiwa. Got a concept Z. Have you tried it? I have it. I have not. I got it at the end of last season, and I'm going to be uh, reviewing that reel as well this year. What kind of hook rod setup do you use for your Rage Toad? They recommend a four out hook on that, but um, I run a six out, and as long as you rig it completely straight, it, it's not going to roll too bad on you. But um, 50 pound braid, I use an owner twist lock, triple X strong hook against a six out. Heavy power rod, fast action, or even a moderate fast. And then six or seven speed reel. Let's see, are you going to fish with more YouTubers this year? Um, I'd like to. We'll see. My work schedule changed a little bit, so I don't really have any days back to back. So it's going to make it harder. So as of right now, probably not. I don't have much luck with a chatterbait. Any suggestions? Um, I mean, most guys fish them around grass and I have great luck with them. Um, and I don't fish them around grass at all. A couple of lakes that I fish don't even have grass in them. So, uh, I mean, you can try it around grass. If you have grass on your lakes, ripping them out of grass and things like that, or even fishing them right above the grass. But again, I fish them pretty much where I would fish a spinnerbait and I fish them a little bit slower, but you know, you can try that out. Favorite old school. With the Rebel Humpback Minnow. Don't see the like button? Yeah, see it. Lucky Strike. I'm changing out hooks on square bills. What hooks do you use? I use the Mustad. Well, it depends on the bait. But for like all my square bills and diving type baits, I use the Mustad Triple Grip. Short shank troubles. I'm fishing tonight, and every time I threw a lipless or scribble crankbait, the back hook got caught up on the line. What could be happening? The back hook caught on the line? You may want to try downsizing your hook. Best $100 rod? I'd have to go with the EVX. It's 109 but it truly is a killer rod. A Kuma EVX. I would love to catch a muskie. I think if I wasn't bass fishing, I would be muskie fishing. Can't wait to see the review on the DC. Best big caster reel for 200 200 bucks. Um, there's a lot of $200 reels out there that are pretty good. Um, I do have the um, Tatula CT. As, um, yeah, it is Tatula CT um, SV. That's 200 bucks. The TCS is 200 bucks. Um, but the Concept Z, there's quite a few in that price range there. Um, I really don't know. I haven't tried a lot of of $200 reels, so I'm not really going to say, but uh, I'm going to do, like I said, a lot of uh, comparing reels and things like that this summer, so we'll, maybe we'll do some things like that and uh, put one reel up against another, and maybe we'll break it down and see which one actually wins. We'll do that maybe in different price points. Mez Rebel Outdoors. There's your shout-out, buddy. Greg Thomas, appreciate the $4.99, buddy. You're interested in the giveaway. Anyone just getting on? We do have four packs of Biospawn and two packs of the Rapid line guides for the Super Chat giveaway. Anybody that donates is entered in the giveaway. Any thoughts on Latimer leaving his grass flat transition spot for two hours to fish bed fish, then come back and boot some kid out of his spot? He left two hours ago. I didn't even see that because I, I mean I was working. I didn't get to watch it at all. But yeah, once you leave your spot, I mean, it's up for grabs. So yeah, I really, I really wouldn't agree with that. Son of a fisherman, what's going on, dude? What's going on, Jim? Appreciate the buck 99, buddy. EB1 Pro, list for 200, but can get it for less. 
Great reel. I do have that one, Victor. I'm going to review that one as well, buddy. Yeah, I use Berkeley. Fish with Mike, appreciate the buck 99. You're interested in the giveaway. What rod do you recommend for flipping? For flipping, since you're not actually um, casting the lure, you need a longer rod for that. So me, I like a 7.6. I know a lot of guys use an 8-footer. But I'm going to do a video on that as well. Pitching versus flipping, things like that. But for that, again, I usually like my line a little bit longer than the rod. So again, 7.6 is kind of what I can handle pretty good. Who hit the dislike button? There's no telling. Some troll. Big Papa Square Belly, I like it. I got one of those, I think, in my Mr. Taco box as well. Pretty good. What's your opinion on the trans? Oh, it's probably the Tranks. Is that what it's called? I haven't used it. Couldn't tell you what. I think uh, Tactical Bassin. I think they did some videos on that. Got a G. Loomis NRX rod. I love it. Have you tried G. Loomis? I have not. How was the most? How was the most you ever? Was oh the most I've ever spent on a reel? Um, let's see here. I mean, I've always bought them on sale. I've always had a discount through somebody. Usually, I mean, I got a few hundred dollar reels. You know, ones that are three hundred. Probably the, the most expensive reel that I have. But I probably paid. I don't know, probably around two hundred something like for it. I think two hundred is probably by the the most I'd want to spend. You know, obviously I'd want a more expensive reel. Who doesn't? But I mean, try and, you know, get a good sale, something like that. So, I mean, 20% off sales, tackle a warehouse, or even just shopping around. Like, if you if you guys want the um, Tatula SV, that's 200 bucks on Tackle Warehouse, regular price. If you go to Tackle Freaks right now, it's not even on sale. It's regular price for 160 And I think they have a 15% off sale going on right now. And um, so, I mean, that's a pretty good deal right there. And I do have, um, it'll be up on... In the description of this video, once it's uploaded, I am now working with Tackle Freaks, and I'll have a um, affiliate link, which you guys can go through if you guys want to support the channel. But I've seen that last night when I ordered that um, that DC, that that Tattoo SV, like I said, was uh, regular price, 160 That's 40 bucks cheaper than anywhere else. Plus, you can save in that uh, that sale they got going on right now. I'd like to see some more videos with you and Fluke. That one last year was awesome. Yeah, hopefully he comes back this year. Uh, appreciate the five bucks, Jay. You're into the giveaway, buddy. Where does a new bass fisherman want to start as in a rod and reel? Uh, medium heavy, fast action rod. Get whatever length you're comfortable with. You know, either six and a half, seven foot is what I would recommend. But a medium heavy, fast action rod can do many different things. You can toss many different baits on it. And um, six speed reel, if you want to go bait caster. Um, you may want to start with spinning, but um, that's what I'd go with. Like I said, six-speed reel, seven-foot medium heavy. Phantom fishing hit the dislike. I wouldn't doubt it. What pound test braid do you use on your bait casting reels? Normally uh, 30 if I throw it with top water, but mainly 50-pound test, which I use for frogs, swim jig, and some pitching. Oh, yeah, Maz, dude, I love the pit boss. Great bait. Actually, the Pit Bosses, they were just released here recently in the Power Bait. And I really like the Power Bait scent. The Havoc uh, didn't have any scent to it. Went to BPS today. Pound test or backing on Baitcaster Reels. Tom, I got a few videos on this. For the longest time, I was using 20 pound test just because I had it laying around. But that made the connection not really big. And I got a lot more real, or I guess more bearing noise with that heavier pound test. So I went to. Uh, 10 pound test mono, which kept my connection not a lot smaller. But last year I started using braid backer, and I think I went with 40 pound braid for backer. Tied a little bit of mono to it first so it wouldn't spin on the spool. Put 40 pound braid backer on there. And I do believe that I did get a little bit further cast with that braid backer. Uh, haven't used P line braid. Couldn't tell you, bud. I should partner up with Tactical Bassin. That would be pretty cool. Yeah, those dudes, they know their stuff, man. Might have up another tattoo if it's that cheap on Tacker Freaks. Yeah, Matt, like I said, I just got that link uh, last night. So if you wouldn't mind, wait till this video is uploaded, and I'll have the link down in the description. And like I said, um, it's an affiliate link, so if you guys do order through it, I will get a percentage of the order. But um, like I said, I got that last night. Yeah, it's kind of shocked because everyone else has it for 200 bucks. 
It doesn't even say sale. It's just regular price, 160 So you didn't shout me out. Caden F. There you go, bud. RJ, do you think fishing a pond as opposed to a lake is the same, just a smaller scale? If not, what are the differences? I mean, there's a whole lot more going on in a lake than a pond. I mean, majority of your ponds, at least the ones that I fish, is pretty much like a big fish bowl. So, I mean, there's definitely a lot more structure and things like that. I mean, especially if it's a public lake, I mean, there's always guys going in there, dropping brush piles and pallets. I mean, there's a whole lot more for the fish to relate to normally in a lake versus a little pond. If you ever go to the clearance rack and buy a few baits and challenge yourself to catch fish on something you hardly ever fish with? Um, not too often, but that's kind of why, you know, I'm, I'm going to get back and doing the slams uh, this year with the Mystery Tackle Box, just because it does put you out of your comfort zone, makes you fish baits that you wouldn't normally fish, and you never know, you may end up catching, you know, more and bigger fish on them. So I'm definitely looking forward to doing the slam. Hopefully, I get a slam in this month. What the turbines when to throw a chatterbait over a spinnerbait since both are so similar? I like a chatterbait when the water is a little bit colder. I just feel it's a little bit tighter vibration to it. It's not as invasive as a spinnerbait as it got the blades and everything spinning. A little bit bigger profile. So when the water is colder, I like a chatterbait. And when it warms up, when I feel like I can fish the bait a little bit faster, a little more flash and things like that, I go for the spinnerbait. What's going on, Josh? Who makes your favorite reel covers? PC Fun. <clears throat> you ever upgrade your bearings? I'm doing it for the first time this year to Boca bearings. Curious on the difference. Oh, yeah, man. I got a few videos on those in the past that I upgraded my bearings. And you might gain an extra, I don't know, 10, 15, 20 feet. Again, depending on your setup and all that. But I think what you notice the most is you get the same distance, you know, with way less effort. So you definitely notice a difference. And really, they don't require much maintenance at all. So. It's definitely a pretty good deal. What kind of trailer do you use on your scrounger head? Uh, I've been playing around with those. Probably the best is like a little um, Shad Impact from Kai Tech. A little like, um, oh, what are they called? A little like, like uh, I guess it's a tiny fluke, not, not the super fluke, the little tiny fluke. Maybe it's called baby fluke. And then um, I like the extra ones as well. And I actually cut the boot off. Good rod setup for jigs. I use um, seven foot heavy, moderate fast action. And then I use what, uh, either 17 pound fluorocarbon, 50 pound braid, and usually a seven speed reel. I like a little bit faster gear ratio with jigs as you're using the rod majority of the time to work the bait. What is the most expensive lure you own? Uh, probably Probably uh, Mega Bass Vision 110. Were they like 25 bucks? Every time I try to switch my hooks on my cranks, I bend the split rings. Any help? Um, get a better split ring. I use the um, the owner hyperwires, and they close back up nice and tight. If for whatever reason they don't, I toss them. I don't I don't uh, fish with the with the bait if the split rings did close up tight. But I would say that you probably got maybe a cheaper split ring and or maybe you're opening it up too far and it's not going to close back down all the way. So either use a smaller like split ring pliers, one's got a little smaller nipple on it, or get a better split ring. Thoughts on Tattoola CT? CT is a killer reel. I haven't used the 100. I do have it to review this season, but uh, so I can't compare the two yet. But the CT is a killer reel. Do you throw a wacky rig? I don't throw them that often. Once in a while around bridge pilings and things like that, but uh, not that often. Yeah, Senkos. I mean, if you want to throw them, you know, weightless, Yamamoto is a good one just because it got so much salt in it, a little faster sink rate. Um, the Exo Stick is a good one. Um, Young Dinger, Yum Dingers is a good one. Fish Brain app, upload all your catches there. Views on cheaper casting reels sold on Amazon. I mean, uh, the PC funds, they're on Amazon. I haven't used them yet. They feel solid. Again, that's another reel that I'll be reviewing. But these days, I wouldn't let price fool you. I mean, you, you get seem like you get more for your money these days than you did before. So just because it's cheap, that doesn't mean really it's not any good. So, Doug, I know you'd be 
you've been trying out a lot of reels and, and other gear. Could you make sure try the PC Fun Phantom X reels? Yep, Doug, I just talked about that, bud. Been thinking about we'll get one for review. Yep, dude, I'll let you know, buddy. Best combo for beginners. I was talking about that earlier. Um, spinning combo, if you're just now getting into bass fishing, it might be a little bit easier for you. If not, baitcaster. And guys, if you watch the video, I got one on Mr. Tacklebox's channel. I got one on my channel. If you set it up how I do, uh, for beginners, you don't even need to thumb the spool. There's no reason to shy away from a baitcaster if you set it up right. And it has a lot more to do than just the reel. I mean, the right line, lure weight, rod, it all plays a role. But if you guys watch that video, I don't think you'll be scared to use a baitcaster. Haven't used the torrent. Have you ever fished for largemouth bass? That's pretty much all I fish for. The problem, Cole, is a heavy power overkill for a lipless? Uh, a tad. I mean, um, if it's got a real soft tip on it, you can get away with it. If maybe you're trying to rip it out of grass, it would work. But I use um, either medium or medium heavy, moderate action to it. Let's see here. I asked about pond versus lake because I was wondering if mastering pond fishing would translate to being on the lake. I tell you what, dude, whenever I'm trying out a new lure, I'm trying to gain confidence in a lure, I go to the ponds. That's how, to be honest, I think I became much better with the spinnerbait because that's one of the first lures I started tossing at the ponds. And I just have so much confidence in them. I think that's why I do so well, just because, again, I've caught so many fish on them. I just have a ton of confidence in them no matter where I go. I just feel like I'm going to catch fish on a spinnerbait. So ponds are great if they're stocked and you can catch a lot of fish in them. It's great to be able to build your confidence up with lures. Ron, appreciate the buck 99, buddy. You're entered in the giveaway. Anyone just getting on? Four packs of biospawn baits, two packs of rapid line clips. Anyone that donates in the super chat will be entered, entered in that giveaway. How do you fish the Exo Swim with Picasso underspin? Uh, basically, I just throw it out real in. And if it's really cold or fish are kind of lethargic, not biting and all that, I'll barely slowly, you know, reel it and I'll just kind of drag it along the bottom. If they're more active, I'll reel a little bit faster, keep it up higher in the water column. Again, it just depends what the fish are relating to, how deep they are, things like that. But basically, I'm throwing it out, reeling it in, and changing my um, my retrieve speed. How is the pay for being phantom fishing cameraman? I don't know, Jeff. Um, man, we were out there a good seven, eight hours. Again, I only fished literally 10 minutes, and that's when I got on the board. And uh, with that little fish I caught last week, or whenever that was. But um, fish seven, eight hours. I mean, I thought the video was hilarious. If you guys haven't watched Phantom's new video, definitely head over there and check it out. But just the laughs I got out of the video really was enough payment. But um, it was it was really a good time, dude. Okay, there's a shout out. <clears throat> ah, throat's already getting a little scratchy here. Favorite crankbait setup. Gotta be EVX, seven foot, medium heavy. Um, really any six speed reel and 15 pounds Seaguard Viz X. Hey TJ, what's the hot lure for this spring for small impoundments? Whatever the fish are biting. <laughs> I'll go with a little shake your head, maybe do a little power finesse like old Phantom. Doomsday lures, I have not. Six skill reels, I haven't used them, bud. When you first cast a jig or crankbait, what factors help you decide what size to start with? You know, with a with a jig, some guys say if you're fishing really shallow, you should go lighter. Um, if you're going deeper, you should go, you know, a little bit heavier. But you know, it really it's all what the bass want. I fish very rarely do I fish over like six foot. And I've had the best luck just fishing in a few foot of water with like a five eighth ounce football jig. I think that faster fall trigger bites. So really you just need to play around with it and see what the fish want. But I mean, a lot of variables come into play there. As far as crankbaits go, I mean, I don't veer off much from the 1.5. That one, the bomber square, the square is a little bit smaller. Majority of the time I just throw on the 1.5. I don't do as good with the 2.5. So I stay a little bit smaller with my cranks. Favorite top water lure gotta be the Rage Toad. Six cents lures, I like them. Great paint jobs. I've only really fished the um, 
The square bills. Oh, the movement. That's pretty good, too. Love the square bill, though. What is a bucket list fish you want to fish for? A big old musky. Hello from Coffeen. What's up, dude? Come on, Sean. Have you thrown the Omega Raptor bladed jig? If so, how does it compare to your go-to brand? Um, I haven't. I know guys that do fish that, and they say all it does is snag wood. And I can believe that with a swivel on the front there. So, um, I don't know. That's all I've heard. Come to the Classic. Yeah, I'm supposed to come to the Classic, but I got to work. I would love to be there, though. Phantom's going to be there. It would be fun to walk around and meet a lot of you guys. But I'll be working. Is it true that Scott Martin left the Kuma because they didn't want to invest in bass fishing anymore? Uh, that's news to me. From what I know, it was budget cuts is the reason a lot of the pros are no longer with Akuma. So, hello from England. I just getting back into fishing. Big panfish fan. Never really fish plastics or grubs. Always a worm guy. Need the recommendations for a four box tackle bag to hold all the junk. Um, there's a lot of different ones out there. A lot of guys I know like the tackle warehouse backpacks. I got a video on the new PC Fun bag that I'm using. Um, Akuma, I've got a few of those on my channel as well. I think Wild River makes some really nice ones. Bass Pro. I mean, there's a ton of tackle bags out there. Lots of jigs, spinners, and some cranks in the hook bobber sinker stuff. Yeah, any one of those bags will work with. Do you have any lures you use but don't talk about? Um, I might have a couple. I can't tell all my secrets, you know. Targeting smallmouth. Um, no clue, buddy. I've never caught a smallmouth. The lakes that I I fish, they don't have smallmouth in them. What's going on, Caden? Have you ever tried out Guggen baits yet? They are great. I have not. I do believe Phantom. I think he just ordered some. But I haven't tried them out yet. I do plan to try them eventually. I'm just in no hurry to try them out. I know a lot of guys are trying them out, reviewing them and all that. But eventually I will try them out. Does leader line on braid make a difference? Uh, I mean, it does as far as action your baits go. I mean, like if you're going to throw like 15, 20 pound braid, you know, and you're going to throw a little drop shot, you're not going to want to put on, you know, 20 pound test fluorocarbon. You know, the heavier the line, the less action that your bait's going to have. So depending on weight, size of bait, you know, you'll, you'll adjust your line from there. So normally, like the lighter the weight, smaller the bait, lighter the line, something like that. Like if I'm going to throw a little drop shot, um, I may put, you know, eight or 10 pound test. I'm going to go shaky head. Uh, I may go to 12. Just depends. Just got the plasma tails. How do you rig them by not using them as a trailer? The small ones, uh, 4.5 mainly. I don't do a whole lot of finesse fishing as far as like drop shots. It means a, it's a drop shot worm. So a lot of guys are going to rig it like that. A really small shaky head. But for me, as I don't fish finesse that much, the 4.5, I mainly use it for a Chatterbait trailer. And if you guys have not used the plasma tail as a Chatterbait trailer, you have to do it. I mean, it, it, it's, it's killer. That little bitty tail dancing all around, man, it's it's killer. No Guggen bait questions. <laughs> I ain't got nothing against those guys. I know a lot of guys give those guys crap. I mean, they're doing big things. Good for them. What's going on, Luke? Quick question for you, boss. Are the Boca bearings really worth the money for 13 fishing reels. Luke, I got videos on them in the past. Uh, if you're looking for casting distance, I don't know, 15, 20 feet, maybe more. Um, I think what it is with those is you get the same distance as stock bearings with way less effort. So, I mean, you just get a, an easier cast. I guess I would say you do gain some distance. They don't really require much maintenance. So it really just depends what you're looking for as far as value there. But, I mean, they're definitely better bearings, no doubt. But if you're looking to get, like, an extra 20, 30 yards, it ain't going to happen. You know, you're talking, like I said, 15, 20 feet, maybe 25 feet, depending on your setup and the weight and all that. But, I mean, it's at least all, all that I noticed. But the the uh, the same distance as stock bearings, the ease of the cast is way noticeable, dude. It's, it's really worth it for that, if that's what you're looking for. What's the best conditions to throw a square bill? Whenever they'll eat it. I mean, I, I throw a square bill all the time. I'm going to say, 
Oh, man, that's a tough one. Spring is great for them, but, I mean, summer, fall. I mean, I catch them pretty much. I mean, obviously, wintertime I don't, but uh, it's hard. it really is hard to beat a good spring and early fall square bill bite, at least where I'm fishing. ATJ rewatched a past tackle warehouse unboxing video. How well do the Jack all Binsky fish? Binsky. You know what? I think that's another one that's probably still over here in the box that I haven't used yet. I'm thinking about it. Do I, do I get a Binsky? I can see it in my mind. I know what it looks like. Yeah, I don't think that one's in my tackle box yet because I don't think I, I don't think I threw it. Luke, appreciate the buck, buddy. You're entered in the giveaway. Anyone just getting on? Super Chat giveaway. We do have the Vile Bug Green Pumpkin. We got the Exo Swim uh, Green Pumpkin Pearl. Vile Crawl Plasma Tail Green Pumpkin. And two packs of line guides. Anyone that enters the Super Chat giveaway. If you donate, you're entered. <sighs> Is the noise of Boca's annoying? Oh, it's, it's not. I mean, you can put a, a, a small drop of oil. It'll quiet them down a little bit. Plus, it helps protect them. I usually run them dry. But they are a little bit louder. But, I mean, it's not enough to annoy me. Favorite lure got to be a square bill. I've caught multiple five-pound on the chatter plasma tail combo. Listen to TJ. Dude, I told you, man, that is a killer combo. I don't know what it is about the little plasma tail. It works better than any other chatterbait trail that I've ever used. When do you throw a chatterbait over a spinnerbait? I like a chatterbait in a little bit colder water. I just feel that a uh, little, bit, little bit tighter vibration to it. It's just more, I guess, natural for the conditions when the water's colder. Uh, spinnerbait, you know, when, I'm, when I feel like I'm real faster as the water is warming, you know, I like spinnerbait. So chatterbait in colder water. Spinnerbait when the water warms up and I feel like I'm real faster. Square bill, stained water, flat or round-sided. Um, early spring, I like the, the flat sided. Again, it feels a little more natural. It's not as uh, invasive. It's not as wide wobbling. It's got a nice tighter vibration to it. So, um, I like the flat early spring. And then as it warms up, I go to the round. Appreciate the dollar ninety nine, Richard. You're interested in the giveaway, bud. What do you use when fishing around trees? Um, lay downs and things like that. I'll pitch a lot of soft plastics. Um, even square bills, things like that. Hello, Tackle Junkie. Do you still have a discount code for Picasso? Um, a lot of you guys think I had one for Picasso. I never did. And I try every year to get you guys one. And for whatever reason, um, I'm having no luck with the Picasso discount code. The best thing you can do is um, Tackle Warehouse carries majority of the Picasso lures. Just wait for a uh, like a 20% sale from Tackle Warehouse and pick them up there. We got 145 people on 80 thumbs up. How would we get to that get that up to 100? Appreciate the buck, Josh. You're interested in the giveaway. What jerk baits do you use? Uh, I'm not a big jerk bait guy. I like the duos, and I like Mega Bass Vision 110. I mean, the 110s are just their killer. Uh, no smallmouth questions here, as I don't fish for smallmouth, but I don't know, bud. And what's the best trail to use with a spinner bait? Four bass. Um, I like probably smaller swim baits, Exo Swim, something like that. And a little perfect plastic swim baits, little Kitex. Um, normally, when I'm throwing a spinnerbait, though, I normally don't start out with a trailer. I like to see if there's going to be a, a spinnerbait bite before I add more bulk to the bait. So if they start biting it without the trailer, then I'll add a trailer to maybe up my catch. But I, ne I normally never start out with a, a, a trailer on my spinnerbait. Voot, voom. I appreciate the five bucks, buddy. You're entered in the giveaway. When's a good time to use a popper? Um, early spring is good. I, I, later spring, I would say. Later spring, uh, summertime, fall. I mean, really, pretty good. I'd say probably I'd do the best. I would say a little bit later spring and uh, early fall. Shout out to Smallmouth Crush. Epic Eric's Tackle. Dude, I still can't get over that, dude. He had like... He had rooms of tackle. It was just crazy. Hey, Tom, appreciate the buck, buddy. You're interested in the giveaway. Is the jackhammer really worth the extra 12 bucks for some of the other Z-Man chatterbaits? Uh, i tell you what. I bought some to do a, like a comparison video, and I've never used them. You know, I, I use the shock blades the most, and, um, you know, I just I, I haven't got the urge yet to fish the, the, uh, the jackhammers yet. 
I do want to do a comparison video this year to really see if they are better than ones that are half the price. So keep a lookout for that video, Jim. But, um, I mean, for what everyone says, they are truly worth it. But, you know, a lot of them say this, I guess, how hard that they vibrate and the, the startup time. But that's that's pretty much known for Z-Man. I, mean, I get the line connection there from the head to the blade. I mean, I, do, I think they do have the fastest startup time. I think a lot of those two, though, I think I would like to know what, when a lot of guys rate just how good a chatterbait is, I would like to know what trailer that they're using just because, you know, I've seen different answers for that. And the, the trailer really plays a big role in the vibration because it can either make or break the, make or break the bait because if you have too much thump in your trailer, it's going to kill the action of the chatterbait. Again, that's why I really like the plasma tails because it, it doesn't affect the vibration at all. No, I didn't want to see if I don't turn. I was working. Deep reservoirs with a flat, muddy bottom. Muddy bottom. I guess I would know. I like to know how clear the water is, Zach. I don't know if it's really deep. Muddy bottom, I like to stay up off the bottom just because you just make it harder to see. But um, with it being a muddy bottom, I wouldn't think visibility is going to be great. How do we get the thumbs up? Sometimes maybe you can't do it on cell phones. Probably tag fish Saturday in Florida. Fish and Wildlife is going to send me a hundred bucks. Does your state do this? I really don't know, Randy. That's pretty cool though. That's right. Listen to Luke. Everyone hit that thumb up button. Kyle, appreciate the two bucks, buddy. You're entered in the super chat giveaway. And guys, remember, if you guys donate, when the video is done, it's processed, it's back up on the channel, you have to look back in the comments because that's where I'll put the winner. You need to reply back to me so I get your shipping info and ship out the baits. Awesome tackle room, totally jealous. I'll keep a lookout for the video on Tuesday. You'll see a little more, I guess a little updated tour of that. Zach, I'm not a big jerkbait guy. I fish them every now and again, but I, I'm by no means a pro at all with jerkbait, so I'm not even really going to give you any uh, any tips on that, bud. Crow Bassin, appreciate the five bucks, buddy. Thanks for the great videos. Keep up the good work. Do appreciate the five bucks, bud. Thanks for watching, and you are interested in the giveaway, man. I finally reached out to Akuma by email about a replacement tip on my rod. Have they told you to cut off a section of rod with the model number on it and mail that with $50 for a new rod? Um, you just need a tip? They may think that maybe you broke... Did you just... Did you actually... Um, I hate when this doesn't focus. Doug, did you actually uh, damage the tip, or how far down did you break it off? Because if you broke it down too far, you're not going to want to just replace the tip, because that will change the action of the rod. But uh, they want 50 bucks for a new rod. I wonder if that, I guess, I guess that probably includes their shipping. Because I thought those had, it could either be a three-year or a lifetime warranty on those rods. Maybe that's just the shipping. I'm not really for sure, but since I am sponsored by them, the one time that I did, um, you know, I didn't even break that rod. I had an issue with, um, it was a new rod, and uh, I think the tip was jacked up on that. And I said, you know what, I'm not going to go ahead and replace the tip on a brand new rod. So they just go ahead and replace the rod for me, but they did want me to destroy that rod. But uh, that's how you do it, I believe, with any other company. I know with Dobbins as well. I know a bunch of guys that broke a bunch of Dobbins rods, and that's what they have them do. Cut the section off that has the specs on it and send that back. That way, too, they know that you're not going to keep that rod, plus get the warranty one. You ever use a Dobbins Champion 734? Yeah, it's a good jig rod. I've used that for uh, for jigs. I've used it for uh, rage toads, uh, pitching and flipping, things like that. It's a good rod. Heavy power. Fast action. Do you watch straight cast my doors? I don't. Warren County Bass NJ. Appreciate the buck, buddy. You're interested in the giveaway? I told them I just want a new tip and didn't want to cut... Up oh, my favorite rod. Yeah, Doug, send me some pictures on Facebook, bud. Let me look at it. But as long as the you didn't actually break the tip off, if it's still there, you just need a replacement tip. Yeah, I wouldn't um I wouldn't throw that rod away either. Or I wouldn't do the warranty. I would just replace the tip. It's super easy to do that, bud. Do you oil book of bearings and when you clean the reel, do you use degreaser on them? Uh yes, I do degrease them. And uh as far as do I oil bulkers, I know you can. It helps quiet them down, helps protect them. 
but um, I usually run them dry. If you do oil them though, very little oil because oil creates drag and you'll actually slow them down. Appreciate it, Kyle. Let's see, Trilene. I use Trilene a lot in the past. Pretty good line. And the XL, it's a lot, uh, It's I guess it's more limp than the than the XT, so it's pretty good on a baitcaster. I have not used the flat KVD 1.5. Oh, here it goes. Luke says you have to X out of the chat, drop down, and the thumbs up will be there. Dave, appreciate the two bucks, buddy. You're entered in the giveaway. 13 now, 13.9 pound largemouth caught in Gunnersville last week by a local guy. Nice. I think 13 something. I think that's like our, our state record here in Illinois. It's a versatile model you can throw spinner baits, frogs, shadow baits, throw heavy grass. Number 100, awesome, dude. What do you think about an ugly stick fishing pole? I've never used them. I've never fished your bass in New England. Ever pack your bank fishing bag too heavy? Got a kitchen sink on my on my back, at least 25 pounds. Any, any suggestions to cut back? Um, I would probably start with less colors. I mean, when I buy a bait, I like to get three, four, five different colors. And majority of the time, if you get a black and blue and a green pumpkin, that's really all you need. And if you want to change up green pumpkin a little bit, carry some dip and dye or something like that. But I would probably cut back on colors first. It's nice to have a variety of different baits, different soft plastics and, and crankbaits and things like that. But color selection is really my issue as well. You know, I like to have all these different colors and I always pick the same two. What's the first thing you look for when targeting springtime bass? Um, you know, Matt, I fish the same lakes every year, and I guess fishing them so much, I kind of know where the spawning bass usually are. So I go right to those, those spots, and I start cranking them. And when I find some spawners, then I like to slow down on those stretches and fish it a lot slower. But I really don't look for anything special. I just go out there and just fish. You know, it'd be different if I was fishing clear water and I could see, you know, see different things in the water. But I mean, I have zero visibility majority of the time, especially now, um, spring, all the rain we got coming to. Um, so with zero visibility, you know, I just go out and fish and see what I can find. Favorite rod's got to be a cranking rod. That's right. Get them likes up. We got 154 people on, 106 thumbs up. 107. There we go. Tell you what, we get the likes to 150. The giveaway right now, we got four packs of baits and two of the rapid fishing line guides. Get to 150 thumbs up, and I'll add another pack of baits to that. How can I sail fishing lures? Not sure what you mean, bud. Yamamoto Z. Yeah, I use Zacco a lot. I like that one. Rage of Shads. I got some of those too. Our swim baits made for smaller tail. Especially be chatterbait trailers. Could trim the baits up, regular swim baits, so they thump less. That's what I do. When I even like the Exo Swim here, I got a bunch of pictures on that. Come on, on Instagram and things like that. When I fish a boot tail, I cut the boot off. That way it just doesn't give me the vibration, and I got the actual bulk that I'm looking for. How do you replace six inch of a good rod? How do you replace it? I mean, if you bust it off six inches of it, it's going to totally change the action of the rod. So, um, I would get a new rod if it was me. It was just the very tip guide that broke off and the rest of the rod seems fine. I will send you pictures. Yeah, send me some pictures, dude. If it's a very tip, I would just replace the guide. What's going on, Steven? Favorite early spring lures to use? I always start out with a square bill, chatterbait, lipless, spinnerbait. Colton, best YouTuber ever. Appreciate it, buddy. I'm three away from my goal of 720. What's 720, subs? In general, when lakes thaw out, what is your go to tactic to catch them? Okay, it has a lot to do with water clarity. I'm sure you guys are. Sick of hearing me talk about this. You guys know I fish muddy water. 
we just thawed a couple days ago. And uh, we do have some warming temps here in the near future. So before I even go out, I mean, even Fluke, even his video, I mean, the worst, one of the worst combos is cold, muddy water. So I never rush out to fish it. I'm going to give it probably a week or two, maybe even a week. I'd like to get out this Friday if possible. But um, I'd like to give it a week or two normally, let it warm up a little bit, at least get, you know, low 40s or so. Once it's, you know, low 40s and starting to rise, sometimes the bite will pick up a little bit, but just cold, muddy water is tough. So, again, I never rush out to fish it. When I do get on the lake, I break out the square bill and I start searching for fish. Searching for fish. And um, that or spinnerbait, normally I start with. And if I'm not getting bit, then I'll slow down a little bit, maybe with a jig, uh, maybe a lipless crankbait. Uh, possibly a chatter made something like that. Sergio, what's going on, dude? What do you think of a good fishing pole? What is a good fishing pole? I mean, there's the rods these days are all pretty good. I mean, I would just get whatever's in your budget. Use any lure retrievers if you get a bad snag, any brand or model recommendations. Um, I got one from Ego that I use, like the nets that I use, the Ego nets. They have one that you can put on the end of their like their their longer um, telescopic pole. Uh, um, if you're looking for one that you can put on a rope, uh, the one I use is the 44 mag, which I'm not sure that guy even makes those anymore. And the other one that I use, it's um, it looks like an orange dog. You can get it from Tackle Warehouse. But since I fish pretty shallow, uh, the one that I like the most is the one that I got from um, Ego Nets. Do I have that in here? No. I don't. It's out in the garage. What are the two go-to colors you're using? Uh, normally, I, mean, I guess it really depends on the bait. If it's a crankbait, normally like a gizzard shad, chartreuse blackback. If it's um, like a jig or soft plastic, normally green pumpkin or bama craw in black and blue. Spinnerbait, chatterbait, normally it's going to be shad type colors, normally like a, a bling shad or some type of shad color than like a citrus shad. here choke your haven't used them yet i did build some of my own if you haven't seen that video check them out but i think it's going to be great especially on lakes that i fish that you can work your bait on the bottom but you're not actually uh, your bait's not actually on the bottom if you know what i mean so you're not you're, you can disturb the bottom but your bait is actually above you know the cloud of mud that you're disturbing so i think it's gonna be killer on muddy lakes like i fish How can I sell unwanted fishing gear? There's a lot of groups on Facebook that you can sell it on. What's your favorite lure to locate spawning fish on lakes that you cannot see the bottom well enough to bet? I tell you what, I, uh, square bill. Normally what I'll do, I'll just run the banks, square bill or a spender bait. And if I catch a spawning fish on that stretch, then I'll slow down with a soft plastic or something like that and work the entire bank. But normally square bill, spender bait is what I'll start off with to see if I can find some bedding fish. Yeah, I fish muddy water. I got zero visibility. Just sharing the feed with Protein 175 owners group. Hopefully viewers will quickly grow. Appreciate it, buddy. I have had a TCS 69 medium heavy for a few months now. Amazing spinnerbait rod, as you recommended. What else do you use that rod for? Could you crank with it? Um, I throw smaller crankbaits with it. But I tell you what, anytime I'm looking to throw really light lures, that's the round I go to because I think it loads it an eighth. Um, it's got a nice soft tip to it. Like I said, it loads up really well so you can cast lighter lures. It's great for a little um, underspin. Again, chatter baits, spinner baits. I mean, it's a great moving bait rod, but um, you could throw a little crank baits on it if you wanted to. But I mean, there's not too much that I won't throw on it, but it's killer, like I said, for lighter things or moving baits. How do you feel about trying a single tail grub on a chatterbait? Um, I have it, but um, I wouldn't think that it would have a whole lot of like, um, what do you call that? Like, uh, it can have a thump like a, like a boot tail would have. So I wouldn't think that it would really affect the action too much. Now, I tell you what, some of those straight tail grubs or single tail grubs, they're pretty big. I think there's some from Kalen's that are like, you know, five, six inch grub. I wouldn't use nothing that big. But if you're going to use like a little two, three inch grub, I wouldn't think that would really affect the action of a chatterbait. What is your favorite fish monkey glove? Um, 
probably, I mean, the wintertime, it's got to be the woolly here. But summertime fishing, I can't remember the actual name of it. They got the stubby here. And this one's a little bit longer. Um, maybe it's called the Half Finger Guide Glove, I think. And you guys can use my code TJ81 to get 20% off at fishmonkey.com. And two, if you guys are looking for the rod mule that's back in stock, Calco's Fishing, again, you guys can use my code uh, TJ81, 20% off. It's a good fishing pole for a broken. What? What's a good fishing pole for a broken now to use? Not sure what you mean, bud. What's your favorite baits, I asked Square Bill? Thoughts on Guggen baits? I don't have any Guggen baits. Uh, I will pick some up because you guys ask all the time. And maybe I'll do a review on it or something like that. Can I catch fish in March? I think this time last year I was already catching fish. But um, we were a lot colder this year than we were last year. So hopefully that I, hopefully I can catch a fish in March. But um, I'm already on the board. I got one little fish so far for um, 2019. Nothing to brag about. But um, I was out with Phantom Fishing and I caught that fish. But I do plan to hopefully get out in the next week or so. And I might do a slam this month as well. Josh, appreciate two bucks, buddy. You're into the giveaway. Enjoy your videos. Keep up the good work. Thanks. I've been using it as a heavier six foot rod. It broke right at the next to the last eye before tip. Was a six six Shakespeare rod. Have you towed the boat with a new truck yet? If so, no, I haven't, Stephen. And I got a new hitch in probably a couple weeks ago. I'll go ahead and get that uh, put on here probably this week, and um, hopefully, like I said, the next week or so, get the boat out. Should the TCS rod take a price drop since Scott isn't sponsored by Akuma anymore? I'd imagine, uh, even if Scott was even with them, that's an older series. That rod's due to be upgraded anyways. And um, maybe this year, maybe a new rod would come out. Then I'm sure they'll go ahead and discount those and, and get rid of them. But um, you can find those rods. I think what retails like 140 I think you can find those rods even at like Walmart.com um, for like, what, 90-something bucks. Thanks for reading my comment. No problem, bud. When do you throw a Scrabble versus Chatterbait? Uh, when I feel they're more aggressive, I like Squirrel. Chatterbait, normally I like to throw uh, when the water's colder, early spring, late fall. If I do do any like wintertime fishing, I like Chatterbait. How do you fish with the bait frog? Bait frog, I'm not sure what you mean, bud. This is good. You are getting lots more questions, comments here. Also, more info back to us. Thanks. No problem, John. Appreciate you tuning in, buddy. If you had to take three lures for bank fishing, what would they be? Bank fishing. Probably spinnerbait for sure. Probably um, a Cinco or like a shaky head. You know, straight tail worm, whether it be a trick worm, plasma tail, or Cinco, something like that. And then, hmm... Bank fishing, spinnerbait. I'm going to say it would depend on time of year too, though, because I want to say like a rage toad or something like that, but it depends when I'm walking around the ponds. But I'd say, oh, that's a tough one. Spinnerbait, straight tail worm or a Senko, and then a soft plastic crawl, like a rage crawl, vowel crawl, something like that. I'd say with those three, you'd be, you'd be pretty good to have a, it'd be pretty good to have a good day. Does that make any sense? It'd be pretty good. Have a pretty good day. I think it'd be pretty good with those three. Finding it difficult to control a three thumbs chatterbait when casting is downsizing the only option. What do you mean um, control when casting? I'm not sure what you mean, Zach. I caught my biggest bass so far with a ribbon tail worm on a chatterbait. Yeah, that works good too, dude. I even like using a lizard to a little bit bigger profile. Get a lizard, cut the head off. Those work pretty good, too. What lakes do you fish where I am just... What lakes do you fish and where I am just wondering? I don't ever say really where I fish, bud. What do you bring to the water if you only had... Was that three hours? Um, yeah, it would really... It's got to depend on time of year, things like that. If I, You know, if I'm going like... If it's summertime and I'm going in the evening, it's going to be like a rage toad. If I'm going um, early spring, late spring, 
Um, it's going to be a spinnerbait. Hope I get 100,000. Me too, man. If water is still cold, a suspending jerkbait as it warms, speed up working it a little more aggressively. Where are we at? No, I've never fished Rin Lake or Egypt, bud. No, I use uh, fluorocarbon, usually straight fluorocarbon on um, spinning gear. Never use your Ziri Braid. How do you fish with a frog lure? It depends on the lure. I mean, the Rage Toad is something you can just throw out and reel in, keep it on top. Um, there's popping frogs, walk the dog frogs. You kind of work those just like you would like a like a top water, you know, walk the dog type bait. Very similar to a frog. On chatterbait cast, cast a control. Finding my thumb slip on the release that changes the area I want it to cast. Do my thumbs just need to man up? Yeah, I would say your thumbs need to man up, buddy. It could be, too, how you're holding the rod. I mean, uh, I know a lot of guys who can cast like this. If you turn your wrist, you have a lot more control that way. Try that out. Bob, appreciate the five bucks, buddy. You're interested in the giveaway. Green pumpkin or black and blue in muddy water? Uh, typically, yeah, black and blue. I mean, green pumpkin almost blends in, but I do feel if you know a fish are there, I mean, they hit green pumpkin super hard just because it almost sneaks up on them. Sneaks up on them just because, again, it blends in with the water. But if you're looking for fish uh, with low visibility and all that, definitely black and blue is hard to beat. Black and blue or a June bug, red shad. Makes you laugh, people. Yeah, I never say where I fish. And really, too, I mean, I hate to do it, but if I'm on, like, Instagram or Facebook and I post a picture and somebody guesses where I am, I have to erase the comment just because the lakes get enough pressure and I don't want to add to it. What do you think about the Guggen squad? I mean, I got, I have really no comment on that. I mean, uh, I used to talk to John a long time ago a lot. I mean, uh, some good dudes. I don't think everybody agrees with what they do. I mean, I've heard some stories, but you never know what's true, what's not true. I mean, I got really nothing bad to say about them. I mean, they're making it big, that's for sure. I just bought a big cast reel for the first time. It's a Berkeley Trilene 10 pound test, XL smooth at casting. Okay, to use on it. Yeah, it's it's a little more limp if you compare it to XT. So yeah, it's pretty good for big casting gear. You make the best video. Do you like to fish with a whopper plopper? I do. I don't use them as much as I probably should, but uh, it's a good alternative to like a buzz bait for me. But uh, normally, um, I think normally I pick up the buzz bait before I pick up the whopper plopper. Sadly, I do have many secret spots as well. Well, I look like we're caught up at a hour and eight minutes not too bad we'll stay on here a little bit longer do you like one rod one reel uh i tell you what it was it was probably i don't know how many years ago it was you know it was back when uh periscope was really popular and at that time myself fluke master it was flair um john b and one rod we were all going to like team up together. I guess kind of like the Googans are now. But at that time, that was like the little group. And uh, we were doing little live streams, just us five together, coming up a little game plan and things like that. So we were all going to start trying to work together. And again, that was when the, um, what I said was what that was called? The live stream deal. What was that called? Um, I forget the name of it. Anyways, he did one of those little live streams. Uh, what was that called? I just said it a second ago. Somebody help me out here. Uh, it was called uh, Periscope. He was doing some Periscope, and I think he was doing like some type of tournament, and maybe the cop shut it down, and he was on there like, F the police and do all this. So I had called Gene right after that and said, look, count me out of this group. I really don't want to be affiliated with him, but that's how he was talking. I mean, a lot of kids get on these things. You really should watch your mouth. Plus, what are you putting down the police for when he's just doing his job? So really, um, after that, I backed out of that whole group, and... Uh, Rest is history. Ever fish strike king shell cracker, or is the big bite bait warm mouth there? Or bluegill style soft plastics look like they would be awesome. Yeah, I do have both of those actually. That's pretty much all I do. Just pitch them around just like I would a craw or something like that. 
But um, I, I think I'm all out of the shelf cracker, but I know I got a bunch of those big bite baits. Those are pretty good. Cheap, real soft. I like those. I think we're about done here, guys. What would you say is the best trailer for a jig? I think it would depend on, on the profile that you're looking for, time of year, um, how cold the water is. I mean, colder the water. I like something with less action, so normally like a chunk, like a KVD chunk or something like that. Summertime, fish are more aggressive. You look for a bigger profile, you know, vile crawl, rage crawl, crawl pappy, something like that. What do you think of turtles and duck type baits? Um, I did I did a little fishing challenge with a duck, and uh, that was actually a really funny video. But um, I guess if you have a lot of little ducks and things like that on your water, I mean, the bass are eating them for sure, so I mean, they're definitely going to work. I didn't have a ton of luck with the duck that I was fishing. I think it was I think it was Danny the duck. If you give any additional thought to the Pelican compared to a John boat, I'm probably going to go with the Pelican too. It's going to be a lot quieter than a, uh, a John boat. So I think Pelican's what I'm going to go with when I pick one up. If you had to fish bass in a trout lake, would you throw the same bait? If you had to fish bass in a trout lake, um, I think they say, Zach, that a lot of big bass come from lakes that have trout in them. I guess they're really fatty and bass can get much bigger in those, in those bodies of water. So I would probably, for the most part, fish the same, but I probably would start throwing some bigger swim baits that look like trout. That's what I would do. No tips on smallies. I don't fish for smallies. Do you peg your flipping setup? It just depends on the cover. And I got a video on this as well. You know, if you need your bait to uh, follow your weight through, then you need to peg it, you know. I got a video on different, uh, different, I guess, cover and things like that. I show in the video when and when you shouldn't peg your weight. I mean, if I don't have to, I never do just because I don't want the weight in their mouth. But I mean, obviously, if you need the, um, the bait to follow the weight through, then you need to peg it. You're going to throw power for that with Phantom next time out? I don't know, man. It, it didn't do great for him. But man, I tell you, wasn't that a funny video, though? I thought he did great on the edit. That really was a good time. Are you going to be stocked up on Gatorade? Doug, the, the fridge is already full, man. I am ready to go. Favorite trailer for a jig is Green Pumpkin. What's going on, Austin? Do you use any live baits? And if so, what bait? And for, No, I don't, bud. Do I fish with 13 fish? And I use some of the reels in the past, and I do have the Concept Z that I'm going to use this year to review. My local pond has been skunking me lately. Do you have any tips? Just keep fishing. I mean, if I'm not sure where you're at, but I mean, right now we just thought if I went out there the next couple of weeks, most likely I would get skunked two weeks in a row. So just got to let the, the water warm up and, uh, you know, the lakes will turn on. Should I use an oval split ring loop knot, a regular knot on a popper? Should I use an oval? Uh you probably want more weight off the off the head there, so a loop knot would be good. Me, I use those, um, what do they call? I always forget the names of these things. They're um, I got a video on them. Norman Speed Clips is what I like to use. They're real lightweight. I, have, I haven't noticed that they affect the action at all, like I said, there's not much weight to them at all. But I like those. And you can actually take the split rings off any of the, your hard baits that you have because there's actually a split ring on the end of the clip. Yeah, dude, that, Greg, that video was hilarious, man. I've already, I bet I've watched it five, six times myself. Now that you're sponsored, do you use any other rods or reels? If so, what are your favorite company of rods? I do, and I'll tell you what, guys, I try to be as honest as possible. I'm probably one of the only guys that I know. I know guys that are sponsored by different rod and reel companies, and they won't even mention another company's um, or different brand or something. If they're, if they're sponsored by one company, they're not going to mention another brand. I recommend other brands all the time. I use other brands. I want to be able to give you guys different options if you're going to purchase a new combo or new rod or reel. I use what I like. And again, for you guys, I use other things. So again, so I can recommend stuff. But um, I'm going to, I got some Daiwa reels I'm going to use, uh, some different Lose reels, PC Fun. I'm going to review that new 
the uh, Pro Qualifier reel. We got a couple of Daiwas and uh, give you guys my opinion on those. I've used a bunch of Daiwas in the past. I did pick up a couple of new ones to review for you guys. But even though that I'm sponsored by Akuma, I'm still using different gear just to give you guys, you know, other options. Did you do a, vi a Corrado DC vid yet? No, actually, Greg, I ordered it last night, so I don't have it yet. So it should be here hopefully this week. Do you throw a buzz bait with a skirt or horny toad? A lot of times I use the little ribbit frogs or I will put a skirt on there. But I do like the uh, little ribbit frogs the most. Six cents. I get that question a lot. Six cents makes a good lure. I got a lot of the square bills. Um, the movement, those are pretty good too. How often would you say you miss fish on a square bill? Um, I would say... Five or ten percent of the time, you know, you miss them. I mean, you never know how they're hooked. And I try and net really every every fish I get on crankbaits. I try and net them all. I don't care how big they are, just because with the water being so dirty, I can never see how they're hooked till they come to the surface. And then sometimes it's too late, so I usually play them out. I don't care how big they are, and I net them. But uh, yeah, I'd say five or ten percent. You know, you, you can't catch them all. Thoughts on Crown DC? I just ordered it yesterday, so no thoughts yet. Once I get it in, I'll I'll fish with it a while, and then we'll go ahead and do a review on it. Do you guys want me to do like? I'm not going to do a review on any of these reels until I use them use them a lot. I'm going to recommend it for you guys to buy them and all that. But do you guys want like a video like uh, first impressions, and then down the road a review, or do you just want me to do the review down the road? Do you prefer sunny days or overcast days? Jacob, that's a good question. I mean, sunny days, it, it, you can almost pinpoint where the fish are going to be. You know, sunny days, normally the tighter to cover. Overcast days, normally that, uh, you know, they're roaming around and things like that. But it depends how you like to fish. If I would like to fish a jig and soft plastics more, I would go for a sunny day. But since I like reaction baits, you know, I can catch them better on a cloudy day with a spinner bait and a square bill. So normally for me, I'm going to say overcast days are, uh, are more fun. Speed clip will give you... Your S waiver, better action. Okay, dude, I'll try that for sure. Yeah, I know they make a bigger, I got the real small speed clips, but I know they make a bigger size speed clip. I'm assuming for those bigger baits. I made some Tokyo rigs after watching your video. Thank you from California. No problem, bud. Best lure for fidgety pre spawn bass. Um, Again, guys, I don't really have much experience with clear water. Um, my approach, muddy water, hopefully it's upper 40s, mid 40s, and rising. I just hit the areas that I had the best experience with, you know, years past. Um, square bill spinnerbait. Once I find a spawner, then I'll slow down and work that entire bank. That's how I approach the spawn. Let's see here. 17 thumbs up until one pack. Tell them to you. Yeah. We got 135 thumbs up, 123 people on still. Right now in the Super Chat giveaway, we have the uh, Green Pumpkin Pearl, Axel Swim, Green Pumpkin Plasma Tail, Green Pumpkin Vile Crawl, and Green Pumpkin Vile Bug. Two packs of Rapid Line Guides. Okay. That's a Super Chat giveaway. If you guys donate, you're interested in the giveaway. We have 136 thumbs up. If we get to 150, I'll put in another pack of baits. There you go, Zach. Just like Fluke Master, he doesn't recommend other rod companies. Fluke Master, don't. I, I don't think he likes to mention uh, yeah, too many other companies, but I mean, it is what it is. Again, I'm sponsored by Akuma, and like I said, I'll use other reels, other rods. I mean, as far as rods go, I mean, I got Dobbins rods. I'm going to use a couple of them this year. I'm just so happy with the, uh, the Akuma rods. I have no desire to even um, want to try other rod brands out. I mean, I'm, I'm happy with what, I, what I'm using. And what it is, is once you use a, it doesn't matter if it's a rod or a reel, once you use them enough and you know how they perform, you know what, you know, lures you can throw on them, what line they handle well. I mean, once you know everything about them, uh, it doesn't make you want to switch. I mean, I know these rods, like the back of my hand, I know just what I can put on them, what they can handle. I'm saying with the line that I use, I mean, I know, you know, the breaking strength on it, what lures I can throw on it, all that stuff. So, I mean, I don't like to switch really up my line. I don't like to switch up my rods. Reels are real. <clears throat> reels are real. Not that big a deal to me. But the rods, again, I don't want to really mess with my rods. I like the rods that I'm using. Again, I know the rods. It is what it is. 
Uh, what do you think about jig fishing? I don't fish with jigs a ton. I love a swim jig, but as far as dragging the jig, since I fish a mud bottom, I don't fish a jig all that often. What was your first rod and reel? Thank you for answering my other questions. Good answer. Uh, first rod and reel. Baitcaster? Uh, Baitcaster would probably be... It could have been a Bass Pro ex, could be Extreme Reel, Bass Pro Extreme, and then probably like maybe the Extreme Rod. It could have been a Pro Qualifier Rod. I think that was one of my first Baitcaster combos. Uh, Chrome. Down with Butcher, Butcher, your last name, buddy. Appreciate the three bucks. You're entered in the giveaway, bud. Favorite Gatorade. You know, I haven't had Gatorade in months, so I can't even remember uh, the, the, the colors or the flavors. Um, Riptide Rush. How about that one? James, please check your email. There is amazing product maybe you'll like to represent. All right, I'll check it out. Review down the road. Start with first impressions. If you're not catching fish, do you change color or completely uh, different lure? Um, good question, Mark. Like I said before, I'm pretty stubborn. Um, normally, if, if I'm going out and I want to catch them a certain way, I'll stick with it for a while. And again, the, the lakes that I'm fishing, you know, I know the colors that normally work. So if I'm not getting bit, I really don't think of the color thing. This fish could not be there. Sometimes it's a timing deal. So normally I'll just take the same bait and I'll just go around the lake until I can maybe find a, a different pattern or something like that. Maybe they're on wood, not rock or, or vice versa. But I don't change colors all that often just because I know what always works on there. You got to think if you're fishing, even take like a soft plastic. If you're, you know, fishing a black and blue craw or whatever, I mean, there's not too many other colors that are going to show up that well in the muddy water. You know, maybe like a black light or a red shad. And even then, I don't think that little bit of color difference is going to make a big deal. So if, I, if, that's, if that's what I want to throw, I'll just stick with that black blue craw for, you know, until I catch them. Review after a few trips. Okay. If the fish are way out there, what's the best method to launch a bait without getting an overrun? Best method, um, heavier weight would help. And to you guys, if, a lot of you guys, I don't think believe in line conditioner. Line conditioner makes a huge difference. I won't cast a bait caster unless my line is conditioned. That's how much I believe in it. It makes the line so soft, takes the memory out. It really does make a huge difference. Best bank fishing backpack. I'm not sure what the best one is. A lot of guys use the uh, Tackle Warehouse. I got a bunch of the Akuma ones, the PC Fun one. I got a video on that. I'm using now. Uh, White River. I think they make some good ones too. Or is it Wild River? They make some good ones as well. Straight craw or craw with jig. Best presentation. Um, my experience, a jig is going to get you bigger bites and a Texas rig craw is going to get you more bites. And um, normally I'm going for more bites. I like a smaller profile. Again, I just feel I get more bites with the plastic versus jig. Jig, bigger profile. Catch a bigger fish. But if you're on a lake where you don't get a lot of bites the way it is, normally I'm going to soft plastic so I can get some bites. And then if I'm on a pretty good bite, then I can always go to the jig and try and up my catch. But normally I start with a soft plastic before a jig. What's a rapid line guide? I got a video on these. What it is is just got a little deal here, kind of like a drop shot weight. You put your line in there and you take this deal here and you run it through your guides. It's just easier to thread your, your guides with your line versus doing it, you know, without one. Especially if you, I'm sure you've all have threaded a your rod before, you drop the line and it goes all the way back through the guides. Well, if you drop it with the clip on there, it just falls and um, you don't have to run it all the way back through. It just makes it easier to, to thread your guides. Comment please on the versatility on the size of your boat. Does it fish? Does it fish big? Does it fish big? In big water? Um, I haven't really had it on huge water. The lakes, probably the biggest lake that I fish is probably maybe 1,100 acres. But like I was just at Table Rock last year. And I probably wouldn't take my boat on Table Rock. I mean, it, I mean there was a lot of boat traffic out there. I mean, there was a lot of water. You know, I mean, that's a lot, that's a lot of water. And just with the, the rollers and everything on that lake, I mean, I, would, I wouldn't think just a little bit of wind, there's going to be some pretty big waves on that lake. So I would think that my boat would take on too much water. So in my opinion, yeah, I wouldn't take my tracker on big water. 
I want to make sure that I had some backup pumps and things like that if I did, because guaranteed you're going to take on a lot of water. You prefer mono or braided lines? Depends what I'm doing. Uh, braid, I like for grass, uh, frogs, swim jigs, things like that. Mono, I like for some crankbaits and top water. Nine more likes. I got 140 likes on my page, bud. First impressions and then a overall review on the road. Okay. Ordered an Akuma bait caster this week because of you, bud. Can't wait to try it. Which one did you get, Adam? What's your favorite tackle box to use? I like this, the uh, the Plano waterproof boxes for majority of my lures. I mainly use Ugly Stick. I'm thinking of switching to Lose. Do you have any opinions on either or one or the other? I haven't used any of the um, I haven't used any of the uh, Lose rods or the Ugly Sticks, but I've used some Lose reels, but no rods. You're going to be glued to the live Bassmaster Classic feed in a few days, and you have a prediction. Uh, I haven't given it much thought, but I'd love to see KVD pull it out. Do you think bigger bass hang out more towards the bottom of a school? I would say probably yes, just because the littler bass are just way more aggressive. So yeah, but a lot of guys too, if they're if they're on a little school of fish and they're trying to get a bigger bite. They'll upsize their bait to maybe deter some of the smaller fish because normally the bigger ones are down below. What brand bobber stop pegs do you use and what size? I think uh, the six cents ones. Yeah, Doug, dude, it's hard to beat the old line conditioner, man. I, yeah, you can throw a bait catcher with a braid line. You don't like finesse, but if you had to, what are you throwing? Um, shaky head or an eco rig? What reels do I use? Uh, mainly Akuma reels, but I'll be reviewing a couple of dialer reels this year. Concept Z, Shimano DC, um, some different lose reels. So, good handful of reels. Uh, yeah, I use line conditioner on braid as well. It quiets it down a little bit. You really don't notice anything else just because there's no memory to it. But uh, I hate when this phone doesn't focus. Yeah, I use line conditioner on monofilament and fluorocarbon. What's your year looking like? Hitting any big name lakes? Probably not. Exactly. I, mean, I had big plans to do some traveling to things when I thought my work schedule was going to be different than what it ended up being. And now I don't have really any days together off every other day um, for a couple of days during the week. So my schedule now, um, it sucks. So yeah, I don't see my, me traveling really like I wanted to. What is the best all-around weight for a Texas rig? Normally, I start with a quarter and go from there. You know, if I'm fishing around rock, sometimes I'll go to an eighth because the faster fall of that quarter in rock normally gets you hung up a lot easier. So if I'm fishing around rock and things like that, normally I'll drop down. Um, fishing around grass, things like that, I might go up. But again, you just got to let the fish tell you because sometimes the faster fall will trigger more bites. So if you're not getting bit on a quarter, you might want to go to a half. That faster fall could get you bit. Scribble crank, silent or rattles? Do you throw red? Do you throw red year round or only during spring? I throw red year round. It shows up really well in the muddy water. And definitely um, square bills got to have rattles. And I like the one knocker rattles. Like the one that's in the little bomber or the KVD 1.5. That's the rail that I really like. Do you have tied on during the summer when bass are hiding from the heat? Uh, 10 inch worm. Uh, again, too, I'm, I fish muddy water. You guys know that. Um, fish don't go that deep in that muddy water. So I'm still going to throw a lot of the stuff that I would throw in the spring, things like that. So, but definitely 10 inch worm, um, bigger swim bait, like a four, I mean, it's big for me, 4.8 or 5 inch swim bait, something like that. And then just the normal or the usual suspects, spinner bait, square bills, um, jig, you know, cross, things like that. Yeah, I've used Concept A. Pretty good reel. What tungsten weights do you use? Any price friendly brands? And thanks for all you do. No problem, Mark. Appreciate you watching, buddy. I like the uh, the Picasso. They're more pricey, but let me go ahead and get one. Hold on.
these right here. The uh, but you got to get the the gunmetal color. Okay, they are kind of pricey, and I would just suggest waiting for a sale, a tackle warehouse, or something like that. But the paint does not come off these. I got weights that I used all year long, and there's paint that's still on them. It's actually within the weight; it cannot chip off. So if you want to spend a little bit extra money and get yourself a really nice weight, you know, go with these right here. But I mean, I've used uh, the Strike King ones. I mean, a lot of guys use the Wu Tungsten. Again, all that stuff will chip, but um, I really like these. Hey, brother, will there be any more Power Team lures, reviews, or unboxings? Um, probably not too many unboxings. I mean, I still get them. If you probably can't see that box right there, that box right there is full of craw nerves. You guys always ask, too, if I even use them. I don't know if you guys even pay attention. This bait right here, that is the craw nerve. That's the PTL craw nerve. That's how much I like that bait. It's killer on a little shaky head. It's an awesome little jig trailer. Just because I don't promote them as much as I used to, I still use them. I still talk to the owners. I mean, it's a great company, great baits. Choice chatter bait, my go to is going to right now going to be the shock blade. Line conditioner. Cavity line lure. And I did try out the real snot, which again, it could have the edge on the cavity line and lure, but because it's so oily, I'm stick with the cavity line and lure. This stuff really is good. You got the Komodo. Yeah, I got one of those too. It's a big reel. It's nice though, Adam. Yeah, you're going to like it for sure, dude. Where do you get the KVD line and lure conditioner? Uh, Tackle Warehouse, Bass Pro. What's your brand of choice for Nico baits? Are you buying nail weights or just cutting nails? Yeah, I got some of the, um, what are they called? Um, BMC little nail weights. I like the, um, I haven't fished them much. This is something I talked about last year. It's something I want to fish more this year. But the little Yamamoto Daiwa, what are they called? The fat. They might even be called them. They might even be Nico worms, like the little the fat ones. That's what I'm going to use probably the most. I get my KVD lining conditioner at Amazon. I didn't even think to look there. Does it going to take you a while to review your reel after fishing it? What are your thoughts on just doing an unboxing and a quick overview beforehand? I could do that, Zach, but I mean. To me, that's no different than you looking on Tackle Warehouse, looking at the reel, and reading the specs. I just, I mean, there's not a whole lot I can tell you from just looking at the reel. Yeah, it looks good or it feels solid, but until you fish it, there's not a whole lot that, you know, info I can tell you. So I don't think me doing a video like that would really do any good. I mean, if you guys really want to see that, I can do that, but really it's no more than just reading the specs. And my reviews that I'm going to do, they're going to be short and sweet. They may only be just a few minutes, but I'm going to tell you pretty much what I liked about the reel, what I didn't like about the reel, if there was anything at all. And, um, you know, what line I had on it, what rod I was using, what baits I threw on it, how it handled, how it felt in my hand. I, I want to keep it pretty simple. I don't want to go through specs that you guys can read online. I just want to tell you, if you're going to fish this reel, this is what you may like, this is what you may not like. Here's what it handled good. Here's what it handled bad. Keep it pretty simple. Thanks for the chat tonight. Good night to you and your family. Thanks, Doug. Appreciate it, buddy. First impression and review. Yep, use the jelly worm, so it's pretty good. I've not used a starter bait yet. What's your 10 inch worm brand and style of choice? Straight tail, curly tail. Uh, what is with this phone? Uh, probably I fish the curly tail most. Uh, what do I like? I like the Berkeley. Um, let's see, Berkeley, uh, Bruiser Baits. Uh, missile, no, that's, I think it's an 8-inch worm, the Missile Baits, what's that called? It's a double tail. I can't think of the name of that one. Missile Baits. Um, can't think of the name of that. Somebody help me in the comments here. Missile Baits. Tomahawk, that's what it's called. Missile Baits Tomahawk. Uh, Culprit, they got a nice river tail worm as well. No thoughts on that crawfish jig, Bill. Um, I've seen it. It looks good. But uh, I'm sure I'll pick one up. Simple Fisherman, thanks for all that you do. Great job on your channel. I've learned a lot from your channel. Appreciate it, buddy. Go on, Andrew. The Helios rods, I have not. I've used the TCS and then the EVX.
power bait, super scent plastics. You got, do you like them? Oh, you're talking about the, uh, the max scent. Yeah, I like them. I haven't used them a ton yet, but I do have high hopes for them for this season. They're kind of, some guys say they remind them of gulp, but they don't dry out like gulp used to. I mean, the, the scent is pretty strong. It's much stronger than, than power bait. First impression, six months. Uh, what size of O-ring? You can just get like a standard size. I'm not sure if they're even labeled. I got them, I get them from, um, Wacky Rig R. They have the finesse. I think they might have, it might even be small and medium. I get all three sizes, just depending on the uh, size worm. But I'm sure you get like one in the middle. Think about selling, settling up a PQ box. Ever think about setting up a oh, PO box? Um, I guess I could. You know, I should make a video on that actually, because I don't want to have to set it up and pay for PO box if nobody's going to send anything. If you guys really want to do that, that's something that I may do. But. Uh, that's something we can talk about in a future video. This may be a question for Miss TJ. Does mud in the water have any effect on the oxygen level? If so, how does it affect fish and their behavior? Um, it's probably one for Miss TJ. I don't, really don't know if the mud hurts it or helps it. I, I would think, you know, obviously any vegetation would help the oxygen level. I don't know if, if the mud takes away from it or helps it out. I have no idea. That's something I'll have to... Uh, Ask her. I'm kind of curious on covering water with a Texas rig, quarter or three eighths. What kind of worm you recommend? Trick worm or Yamamoto or a different brand? Covering water. Water with a Texas rig. Um, if you're, it looks like you're wanting a trick worm. You know, it looks like you're wanting a worm. I mean, those are straight tail worms. I would probably go with like a ribbon tail worm. It just makes a little more commotion. Um, you know, probably like a seven or eight inch ribbon tail worm is what I would go with. If you're just going to want to cover water, throw it out. And you can reel them in. You can drag them in. That's what I would do. Versus a straight tail. You ever throw lizards? Yeah, not too often, but I do throw them. You know, I, I tell you what I do probably the most with lizards. I cut the head off and I use them as a swim jig trailer. But I mean, the culprit or the, I think the water dragon, those are pretty good. I used those last year. Uh, I probably use the striking rage lizard the most. You ever dropped an expensive rod in the water? Um, I can't say that I have. Uh, no thoughts on Kistlers. Haven't used them. Tackle HD soft plastics. I haven't. See you, John. Appreciate it, buddy. Washing this is expensive. Just ordered KVD line conditioner on Amazon last week. I ended up buying two new reels from Mass Pro. <laughs> All thanks to you. Sorry, dude. But I tell you what, you're going to love the new reels, and you'll thank me later for the KVD line allure. This stuff is awesome. What tube do I throw? I used to throw Yum Tubes a lot. Uh, Mega Strike are the ones that I throw now. Here we go. Greg's got one. The muddy water heats faster and has lower oxygen content than clear water. There you go. In your opinion, what's the best swim jig trailer you have used? Um, believe it or not, it was years ago. I was throwing a swim jig. It was actually it was a KVD swim jig, and I was throwing a yum chunk. The yum chunk was a, what color was it? I think it was blue fleck. I probably did the best on that combo than any type of swimming trailer you could put on the back. I don't know what it was about that combo. It always caught them. And I remember that. I think I even ran it on a 30 pound braid, medium power, fast action rod. It was a combo that really didn't even go together, but it, it all worked. But these days, I probably throw, for a swim jig, I probably throw probably the Rage Menace the most. So you, do you use any dye pens? If so, how are you marking your soft plastics? I just tip them normally if I'm throwing a craw or something like that. I'll just tip the ends. Normally, I just dip them in JJ's, but for my pond bag, I did put a little spike at markers just because I didn't want the mess. And sometimes, too, like if uh, I'm using like a Bama craw, you'll notice some of the, like the orange belly, maybe they're not as dark as others. Sometimes I'll just take an orange over that belly and really brighten up the orange or even with chartreuse, things like that. 
No, I never use Guga baits. Never fish a spotted bass. What is a good setup for a 10 year old girl just starting to fish? I would say probably like a spinning setup. You just have like a seven foot medium power rod, fast action, you know, 2,500 size spinning reel. Put on like 10 pound mono, a little, uh, you know, small Texas rig, a little plastic or something like that. That's what I start with. Just picked up some yum thumping dingers. What's your take on them? The thumping dinger. I think I've seen those. Confidence top order bait has got to be the Rage Toad. NRX thoughts with Shimano quality. I've never, I've never used NRX, so I can tell you, bud. We are caught up. We are an hour and 40 in. I think I'm about to get off here because my throat is a little sore. Favorite buzz bait? Um, Cavatron. Let me say the Cavatron. I like that one, and I like the um, Picasso Dinner Bell. The dinner bell's got a, on the on the shaft there, it's got a little tough piece of tungsten, and you can adjust the blade to either hit the tungsten or not, so it's just a different sound. I would say, yeah, probably those two I use the most. Appreciate it, Greg. You're the man, dude. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Yeah, hour 41 minutes, we're going to get off here. And uh, again, we do uh, have a bunch of guys that entered the giveaway, so make sure when this video is processed that you come back to the comments and see uh, who won. I'm going to put it in the comments. I'll pin the comment. Then you need to reply to me so I get your address so I can ship everything out. Okay? And make sure you guys check out uh, Tuesday's video. You guys want another update of the tackle room. I did do something else behind the wall. So keep a lookout for that video on Tuesday. I use the same setup as a 10-year-old girl. Dang it. Hey, if it works, dude, it works. Best jigs you've used. That's oh, got to be the new jigs. I love new tech, new jigs. I believe they're like the cutter worm. Oh, the cutter worm from Striking. I love that worm. Look forward to every Sunday evening. Thank you. No problem, buddy. Appreciate it. Hey, you guys are awesome. I'm going to go and get off here. Thanks for tuning in, and we will see you guys on the next one.